Fox Sports. The Angels and Angel fans happy that last night is over with. It was a tough loss, but just one in the books. We're ready for game number two of the three-game set between the Angels and the visiting Milwaukee Brewers. Hi, everyone from inside the Big A. Victor Rojas along with Mark Gubiza. Glad you could join us once again for Angels baseball. Like I said, it was just one loss. It wasn't a very pretty one, but... Those things are bound to happen throughout the course of a long season. Exactly, Victor. I mean, when you think about it, what a great road trip the, the Angels had there. They were 11-3, and three, capped it off with a tremendous sweep of the Dodgers. Hey, they didn't play well. They didn't pitch well. They didn't swing the bats well. You just got to move forward, of course, and win the game tonight. All right, last night, of course, the big topic was, especially at the end of the game, Eric Ivar's injury. Casey McGee went hard into the bag at second base. Some have disputed the fact that it was a clean play. Others have said, well, perhaps an unnecessary play. Your take on it. Well, I think the big thing is he you can see McGee was actually hit with the pitch before. He had that look in his mind. He was going to try to take out a middle infielder if he could in that situation. Well, the opportunity has arisen at that point. My thought process is, again, the revolving door at first base for the Angels. It's a difficult task. Guys getting their first starts in the major leagues at first base. There's going to be some errant throws at times. He did the best he could, Eric Ibar, getting out. There was no attempt as far as a double play, so that was a play that I think it could have been prevented. We will hear the extent of the MRI on Eric Ibar throughout the course of the game. Tonight, you got a couple of right-handers, unlike last night when you had the two left-handers. It'll be Irvin Santana going up against Dave Bush. Also, coming up on the show today, we'll talk about the All-Star Game. Who is leading the All-Star balloting, both leagues, American League and National League? We'll have Phil Engel here from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour to talk about his blog on FoxSportsWest.com. And we'll also talk about Jim Edmonds, the Southern California native, back at the Big A having fun. We'll have that and much more when we return.
Official Superstores of Angels Baseball, nobody beats Howard's. Buy your Southern California Hyundai dealers. Want more MPG? Hyundai has it. And is now the most fuel-efficient car maker in America. And buy Shakey's Pizza. Who was the last American League baseball player to win the Triple Crown in 1967? Go to shakies.com slash trivia. Beautiful shot inside the Big A here in Anaheim. Brewers and Angels in game two of this three-game set. And as always, this presentation of Angels baseball is presented to you in spectacular high definition by Time Warner Cable. The visiting Milwaukee Brewers roll into this one with a record of 27 and 37. They are nine games back in the National League Central. But they had a big victory last night. The offense came to life. And the Angels trying to keep things in check here in game two as Irvin Santana's first pitch is outside. You see what Irvin's done in his last six starts. Five and one mark ERA under two and a half. Been dealing. Ricky Weeks serving as the DH. Rounds this one to Meister Sturz. And there is out number one. As you take a look at the lineup, the Ken Maka runs out this evening. Weeks at the top of the order. Corey Hart out in right field. Prince Fielder at first base. Ryan Braun had that. The grand slam last night, last night, pardon me. Casey McGee at third base, Jim Edmonds in center field, Craig Council at second, Jonathan Lucroy doing the catching, and Al City's Escobar at shortstop. Boy, Irvin's been throwing the fastball so well. And going back to that last road trip with the manager for the Royals, Ned Yo, said Irvin Santana had the best slider he has seen all season long. First pitch swinging here is hard out to right. Bobby's got it, and there is out number two. Take a look at the home depot. Doing more on defense for the Angels. Rivera left, Hunter in center. Bobby Abreu's in right on the infield. Brandon Wood is back off the disabled list. Meister Sturz playing shortstop. Howie Kendrick and Kevin Franson on the right side, just like last night, with Mike Napoli doing the catching. Well, Brandon Wood back at third base. Soft hands, played some solid defense. Really hasn't been an issue. It's been the bad at times so far of the season for Brandon Wood, but he's been very good with the glove. Good strong throw from over there at third base. There's Ryan Braun who takes with his ball one. Braun had that grand slam last night game. It was two for four with five RBIs. Now with 45 runs batted in on the year. Irvin falling behind at two balls and no strikes. Bronze average at an even 300 now. Takes outside. Irvin being very careful with Ryan. Well, you can definitely guarantee Braun if he gets a fastball now where he wants to try to drive it, he will be swinging it and getting a green light 3 0. Have to be careful. Go down and away with that fastball. There's a strike. 87 innings of work coming into this one for Irvin Santana, fifth most in the American League. Two complete games under his belt this year. 3 1 is a strike, and it's a full count. The time after back to back fastballs, fastball outside corner, fastball inside. He's comfortable with that slider, could get the swing and miss. He's coming back inside with the fastball. Jams him and he puts it out into right field. There's a base hit. Good piece of hitting by Braun fighting that pitch off. And the Brewers get their first man on board with two outs here in the first. And Prince Fielder will step up. Irvin's okay. got to keep an eye on Ryan Braun over first base. 11 stolen bases on the season. And Irvin fairly deliberate getting the ball home. Doesn't give catcher much opportunity so he's going to have to hold the baseball various times to home a quick throw over there Ryan's back safely Brewers haven't run a whole lot just 38 bases on the year Ryan Braun is the team leader with 11 and has not been caught stealing as of yet Fielder takes downstairs 0 for 4 last night, but he had a walk and a run scored in that third inning. That's when Milwaukee put those five runs on the board to take a 5 to 2 lead. And from that point forward, Randy Wolf and the Brewers' offense just putting it in cruise control. 
Wolf picking up the win, his fifth of the year, while Joe Saunders took the loss last night. His seventh, now five and seven on the season. See how that sunlight is going right in Irvin Santana's eyes before it settles down here. It was seven o'clock start. Irvin trying to be able to squint in there to be able to see the catcher's position where he's put up the target. Couple of shakeoffs for Santana. Angels overshift on the infield as Prince takes a strike and it's two of them. Kendrick out at shallow right is Sturis to the right of the bag at second. Brandon Wood, the third baseman at the shortstop position. The outfield's playing around him to hit the ball the other way with Torrey Hunter shading over to left center. After two very quick outs, Irvin took the full count to Ryan Braun before he got the base hit. Now it's followed by here on Prince. Three balls in his strike. And Casey McGee on deck. That's a good idea to fall behind against Prince Fielder, a guy that crushes the fastball, so he's in a fastball count now. A dangerous pitch here for Irvin. And that's out to deep left center field. Rivera is pulling up, and that was gone. Prince Fielder goes the opposite way on a 3-1 pitch. And the Brewers here in the early going up 2-0. And when you know that fastball's coming, and the way the outfielders were shaded in the outside to left, left center field, you know he has that ability to go the other way. That ball was crushed. He got out in a hurry on that fastball 3-1 count. Fielder's 13th home run of the year, now with 26 RBIs. A fastball out over the plate. He knew it right away. Although it didn't get out by a ton to be able to go that slow out of the batter's box just in case. And he started going out thinking it was a home run, but then had to regroup. Started running almost missed first base. 13th home run that Santana has allowed this year. And he has struggled against left-handed batters. They've touched him to a 293 batting average coming into this one. Gee fouling now with straight back, and it's a one ball, one strike count. One and two now. McGee a 275 average with 11 home runs and 47 runs batted in. Good follow-up season to that rookie campaign he had last year. And with that Prince Fielder home run, another $15,000 has been raised to support prostate cancer research. To make a donation, you can call 800-798-CURE or go online to www.pcf.org. This is a home run challenge ball game for every home run. Worth fifteen thousand dollars. The Urban his last two fastballs, letting them go ninety-five and then ninety-six. Check the swing on the slider. We threw three pitches to start this ball game. Got two outs. Seventeen pitches since. Sometimes we said that two outs, two zero. -oh. Get two outs, you kind of lose focus. Next, we know you're two zero -oh count. He went around to his Angel Campos. He brings him up and there's out number three. But the Brewers strike first. They pick up their 81st home run of the season. Prince Fielder, his 13th. They lead it 2 nothing.
13th home run of the year. Mike Shosha and the Angels will run out this starting nine tonight. Halos roll into this one, 36 and 31. Let Meister Sturz lead things off in short. Howie Kendrick playing second. Bobby Abreu in right. Torrey's out in center. Hideki Matsui at DH. Mike Napoli doing the catching with Juan Rivera in left field. Kevin Franz in the first base. And Brandon Wood, first game since May 23rd, coming off of the disabled list with that hip flexor problem. They'll be facing Dave Bush, a guy that's not overpowering. Kind of a, 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 a Randy Wolf from the right side. Yeah, it doesn't overpower. Like you said, 85 to 89 on that fastball. He tries to sink it. Curveball, slider, and changeup. Throws a changeup a lot more of the lefties than he will right-handed batters. Wolf last night going seven innings, allowing just three hits. That's all he would give up. Two runs. We tie what 13, 14 guys in a row yep. at one point. Big pitch of that game last night. Base slow to 2 0 change up to Juan Rivera to get the fly ball out to right field. It's three balls and no strikes. Meister 0 for 3 last night. His batting average down to 232. Getting the start at shortstop for the injured Eric Ivar. We're supposed to hear about. MRI results at some point. I was talking to the guys before the game about that. They, they felt, well, granted, obviously the MRI would show more, but they felt he was moving around very well after the ball game. They were confident he wasn't going to miss too much time. Meiser out to left center. Jim Edmonds is out there, familiar territory, makes the catch. And there's out number one. We take a look at the defense for Milwaukee. Braun and left, Edmonds in center, Corey Hart in right. On the infield, it's McGee at third base. Escobar is short. Council of second fielder first with LeCroy doing the catching. Jim Edmonds, you mentioned him out there in center field, controlled in these grounds for a number of years for the Angels. You make an argument, one of the best fielding center fielders the game has seen, certainly in the last couple of decades. Fastball was in there for a strike. Seven years with the Halos. Two gold gloves in the American League, six in the National. That slow curveball, that's the Bush specialty. It's no balls, two strikes on Howie. He likes to bounce that curveball, too, especially when he's ahead of the count like he is right now, 0 2. One ball, two strikes. Bush, a Pennsylvania native of Wake Forest University. Second round pick of the Toronto Blue Jays. 2005, it was part of that Lyle Overbay trade. That's how he pulls out with foul. So the Angels have faced a number of pitchers similar. Eli Monasterios, Chris Bush, Randy Wolf from the left side. Guys that hit, try to hit the outside part of the plate will show in. It cannot get you out inside, so look away on them. Take care of that all speed pitch. If he hangs that curveball, that's when you do the damage. Howie drilling this one out toward right center field. Edmund spins around. He's going to watch this one go off the top of the wall. Howie in his second with a one out double. That's his 18th double of the year. And can't overpower you, so look out over the plate. Drive the ball that inside out swing for Howie. Box tracks will show exactly where the location was. Ended up being middle in, 87 miles an hour. Look how Jim Evans plays this really exactly where it's going to bounce off that wall in position. Seen that bounce a number of times. Just the instincts alone to spin around, knowing off the bat how that ball was traveling. Go ahead and spin around, not even bust all the way back there. Just Play the carom because if you're center field, you go all the way back the way that ball ricocheted off the wall. That's at least a triple if it gets by a there in center. But he realized that he had no chance of making that play. Abreu takes a strike. He was 0 for 2 last night. Lifted late, just like Tory Hunter was. 262, seven home runs, 33 RBIs. Bobby's hit well here at the big A. Now it's in at the knees, it's 0 2. The Angels had some opportunities in 
the game yesterday, early part of the game, especially. You were talking about the 2 0 pitch of Juan Rivera. That's when the Angels left the bases loaded. That was the third inning. After they had jumped ahead with two runs in the second, they still left two men on there. Just one for seven with men in scoring position last night, whereas the Brewers were six for 14. 0 2. In tight. One ball, two strikes. If you're a hitter for the Eagles, yeah, but pitcher up there relies on his curveball and his slider and his changeup and spot the fastball. That fastball inside at 87 miles an hour allows you the opportunity to look out over the plate. No, you can't be beaten on that fastball inside. Breaking ball, and that's pulled to the right side. Council's got it. And that's out number two. Kendrick moves over to third. Tory steps to the plate. Tory was 0 for 2, so his batting average now at 284. Hitting Dave Bush 299 with seven home runs. That'll leave it a count of one ball, one strike. He's given up 10 home runs. He's had limited experience against the Angels throughout his career. 0 1 at a 321 ERA. This one's off the end of the bat. One ball, two strikes. One two from Bush. That one got him on a hand. A hit batter, and that'll bring up Hideki Matsui. Fastball inside again. This fastball this is for effect in the inside part of the plate Just to keep the hitters honest. Right on the hand. Saw that last night from see the numbers Dave Bush, 67 batters hit over the last five years. But Andy Wolf came into the game and hadn't hit a batter. Hit two yesterday on 0 2 pitches, very similar to that. No intent, just trying to establish that inside part of the plate. When you don't overpower people, you have to throw inside. Occasionally, the pitch will get away from you. Matsui lays off the first pitch fastball, and it's ball one. It's the DH last night went 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. Howie Kendrick at third base, Torrey Hunter at first. That was in the dirt. Nice job by Lucroy. The youngster that the Milwaukee Brewers absolutely love, their catcher of the future. Getting a chance to be in the big leagues, even though they per would have preferred that he stay down in the minor leagues. But Greg Zahn suffering that injury to the shoulder. That's why he's in the big leagues. Qatar is doing the bulk of the catching. There's a strike. Angel Campos behind the plate calling the balls and strikes him. An ample zone thus far for both sides. So all you want is consistency out of the home plate umpire. There goes Torrey. The 2 1 is a little number up the middle, off the mound. Nice play by Escobar. And Matsui's retired easily for out number three. So the Angels threaten, but can't cash him in. One complete. Brewers up 2 nothing.
game. Milwaukee up to nothing. Jimmy Edmonds leading things off. Her career 290 hitter with 121 home runs. Wearing an Angels uniform. For eight years in St. Louis. A brief time with San Diego. Let go. Like he, his numbers in San Diego were putrid. Signed by the Cubs and all of a sudden resurrected playing day baseball in Chicago. As Edmonds pulls this one into right field for a base hit. With Edmonds getting that base hit, we go back in time for our Jaguar <laughs> key performance. Gooby, you, uh, you're very familiar with this. This is the catch. Well, I remember this play. At that point, I was a member of the Angels. I've never seen anything better than that in my entire existence watching baseball. That was a game-saving play. David Howard, the infielder for the Royals at that point, was not a powerful guy. So Edmonds was playing up this full-out extension straight back, made an unbelievable game-saving catch. Craig Council takes outside for ball one. Council over three lives tonight was the starting third baseman playing second tonight. I mean that will go down in the annals and I know Mickey pardon me uh, Willie Mays's catch is the catch. But in our generation that's our catch. Because I mean that's just flat out ridiculous. I mean that was right over the shoulder full sprint. Diving, I mean, most, I mean, most times you see an outfielder or even an infielder, whatever it may be, diving to the side, left or right, but straight behind him like that it was an unbelievable catch. Not to take anything away from Gary Matthews' catch in Texas against the Houston Astros, but that was, for all intents and purposes, climb the wall, throw the glove up there, and hopefully it goes in there. And it did. Right? That was a great one. Jim Edmonds' catch, that was dead on track. Off the bat. I have no problem saying that was the best catch ever. Period. I don't have any problems disagreeing with you. <laughs> but I won't this time. <laughs> I was going to say, that would be a shocker. <laughs> the deer in the headlight look was, I was great. Like, Wait a minute. You're not going to disagree with me? That's a, I mean, that is an amazing catch. Council ripping this one right field. Abreu plays it on a bounce. Edmonds advances to second. So back-to-back -back base hits as we take a look at the Hyundai keys to the game. Well, you come over for Urban Santana. He's got to work down in the zone here. Having some trouble, especially with that slider. Some sweet music from Urban. Needs some zeros now from this point forward. You like that one, Vickers? I do. Big Santana fan. What's that mean again? <laughs> I came for you for help. I'm quoting the music. <laughs> so the first two men have reached here in the second. Here's Luke Roy. Takes a strike. Hadn't played above double A prior to this year. Last year, as a matter of fact, at double A at 267 with nine home runs and 66 runs batted in. He's a Florida native that went to the University of Louisiana. Lafayette. Third round pick by Milwaukee in 07. But Irvin's getting underneath that slider early in this ball game, and that's been his most effective pitch. So when you get there, getting underneath the ball, it's going to have a flat break on that slider. He's got to get on top, and it's a perfect opportunity to throw that pitch ahead of the count on a young hitter, span the strike zone. Jammed him with a fastball. It's no balls, two strikes. It's a breaking ball lined into center field, a base hit. Being waved around as Edmonds, a throw home is in time, but Edmonds stopped and heads back to third base. What a great throw by Torrey Hunter. Edmonds was coming home. But unlike most base runners that just keep chugging home, Edmonds looked back 
over his left shoulder. You see where Torrey was at, picked it up, fired it home, and slammed on the brakes. Well, Brad Fisher, the third base coach, was sending him home. He was waving him home. But Edmonds looked up and saw he was going to be out of the plate, especially with no outs. Well, he picked up the throw. Got back in time. Now, Irvin Santana, again, that was that slider. Got underneath it. Slider more than any pitch as far as if you want that good break to it, you have to be on top and snap it. If you get your wrist and get underneath that pitch, you're going to see some hanging baseballs over the middle part of the plate. We've seen a number of them already early in this game. Well, three consecutive base hits to start the second inning. On the heels of the two hits he gave up in the first. He'll face Al City Escobar, the young shortstop, who was two for five last night. His batting average at 246 with a couple of home runs, 17 runs batted in. Looking for that big pitch here. It goes with a slider. The two and one. And a better break to it. In this situation, you're trying to minimize the damage. A double play ball will be perfect for Urban. Fastball missing in. One ball, one strike. You saw the bases loaded with Edmonds at third. Council at second. Lucroy at first. Outfield rather shallow. All the way around. This one's a bouncer up the middle toward the bag. How he's got it. Flips with the glove. No play. Edmonds scores. And it is 3 0 Milwaukee. Make that four straight hits. Well, that shot right in front of the home plate area. Very nice, nice job of trying to make that play, flipping it over to Meister. At second base, or Hunt Exmo will show the play was there. Sometimes you just got to think in lines and try to just to get that one out. Flipping with the glove, tough play, but prevented another run from score. No, how he's showing some good range. Ricky Weeks, who grounded his short in the first inning, is 0 for 1. That'll leave an account. Still looking for that first out here in the second. Urban's lacking on that slider, at least what we have grown accustomed to seeing from the young right-hander. He's made up on the fastball. He's got some life on that fastball, at least on the inside part of the play, just like on that last swing by Ricky Weeks. Trust that movement in the velocity, get it out. And he got him with a fastball, and there's out number one. A good fastball, the velocity, late movement through the zone. Set up at the inner half of the plate at 90 miles an hour. Very difficult pitch. You've got to catch up if you're a hitter. You make that commitment. At the letters, see so many swings and misses. Hitters see that. Baseball looks bigger, then it gets by you. Hart takes a fastball inside. He had a fly ball to Bobby Abreu in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. That strike out of Weeks, the second for. Urban Santana. In tight. And it's two balls, no strikes. Hart's the National League leader in home runs. 17. Brewers tops in the National League. Team home runs with 81 now with Prince Fielder shot in the first. Right. Two, by that swing by Hart, he was expecting a fastball 2-0, bases loaded. Got the slider way out in front. Hart is hitting the five double plays, and Urban could use one right now. Oh. 
Those last two have been pretty good. If you found that slider. One of those situations where you don't try to do too much with it. Such as that. Full count. Overthrow it. Your mechanics were perfect. You didn't have to do anything different. When you have a, a batter swinging like that, those last two pitches, don't try to do anything different. Don't try to muscle up on that slider. Extremely tough hitter on deck. Going to make him start off the inning next inning if you get a ground ball here. And that's a hanger that he punches into left field. That's a base hit. Council, Luke Roy, Escobar. All coming into score. Bases clearing double for Corey Hart. And it's six to nothing, Milwaukee. Boy, right out over the part of the plate. Just when you thought he had a good arm slot for that slider, the last two, he overthrew one, then he came right back and got underneath that slider with his wrist. The result is a three run double. Hart now with 47 RBIs. Here's Ryan Braun, still one away. Braun fought off a very good fastball in on the hands of the first inning. He put it into right field for a base hit, so he's one for one. Remember, there's one less man in the bullpen tonight with Rafi Rodriguez being sent down in order to make room for Brandon Wood to come off the disabled list. You wouldn't think that Trevor Bell would be available after an inning and a third yesterday. And Braun skies this from the shallow left. Meisner's there. Nope, they're calling catches interference on Mike Napoli. So Braun will reach. And it's an error on Napoli. Way just reaching out for that hit. You can see this is the tip of the glove he hits. So one out. Talk about a guy waiting for a pitch deep in the strike zone like Ryan Bra Braun was able to do so. Hits the glove. Prince Fielder with that two run shot in the first inning. 13th of the year. 26 RBIs now. Got a 1 0 count. That's in tight. It's two balls and no strikes. Take a look at our radio shack. What do you know on Prince Fielder? The only father son duel. Major League history. Both hit 50 or more home runs in the season. Three balls and no strikes. Yeah, Cecil and I were teammates in the minor leagues with the Kansas City Royals. Cecil's home 50. How did he hit that year? 54? The Tigers, right? Well, he hits right after he came back from Japan. Well, he had some unbelievable shots on that old stadium on the roof. Mm -hmm. Talk about unbelievable power. He did so with the Yankees also. Toronto. And Urban's loaded them up now for Casey McGee. Still one away. First walk issued by Santana. He's allowed seven hits, six runs thus far. This on the heels of the five inning, four earned run, seven hit performance against the Oakland Athletics. That snapped his five game winning streak. 
Back on the 10th. He's thrown 51 pitches so far, inning in a third. The second time of the inning, the Brewers have them loaded up. It's McGee, who struck out of the first inning, takes a strike. Corey Hart at third, Braun at second base, fielder over at first. He gets jammed, and it's no balls, two strikes. If you're with Santana right now, you've given up the six runs. You have to think of the lines of, I got to. Throw, throw up some zeros from this point. I got to get angry on the mound. I got to let that fastball go. Challenge these hitters. I got too good of stuff to give up six runs already here in the second inning. Got him with a breaking pitch. Down goes McGee, and there's out number two. So Jim Edmonds, who led this inning off with a base at the right field, will step up now with the base loaded. Howard's excellent will show the conviction on that slider, the break. You see how that it seems the baseball turned into a dot. That means he threw that ball with authority, got on top of that slider, snapped it off. No balls in the strike on Edmund. One for one with that single and a run scored. Quickly, no balls, two strikes. Irvin's thrown 35 pitches now here in the second. Oh, two out to left. Rivera in his tracks, comes in a couple of steps, makes the catch, but the Brewers score four more. They do it on five hits, an error, and they leave them loaded. They're up six to nothing. Time it is six nothing Milwaukee, Napoli Rivera Franz and against Dave Bush. He allowed a couple of base runners with a double to Kendrick and a hit by pitch, but Angels just could not bring a run home. Mike was 0 for three last night, 254 on the season, 10 home runs, 26 RBIs. And probably feels a lot better that no runs came across after the catcher's interference. We've seen a few of those already this year. That's always had a couple of them himself in the catcher's mid. Count even at one ball, one strike now. 
from Milwaukee Brewers. Paul Molitor was very good with that because he was so quick and trust his hands, let the ball get deep in the zone. He would hit the catcher's mitt a number of times himself. Do you ever have any conversations with catchers about that? No, I mean, I, I, not many times. I can, you know, I don't recall ever once having a, a catcher's mitt be hit when I was pitching no. out there. Never. They were no. probably too eager to run out there and hit the baseball before it got to the mitt. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. They were rushing out. Where, where's that pitch at? It's two balls, two strikes on Napoli. He hooks this one down the left field line. That is foul. And you're going to see some of that because Dave Bush throws that slow curve ball in the upper 60s at times. He's a guy that when he's ahead of the count, or at least even with the count here, he wants to bounce that curveball. When it's up in the zone at all, it's going to be crushed. It's a matter of staying back long enough. Fastball, the highest has been so far is 88. Curveball has been at 68. And Napoli goes down swinging for round number one. Take a look at our Farmers Insurance True Stories of the game. After 67 games this year, 36 and 31 last year, the exact same record. I remember and recall the number two, last year with Tory Hunter and Vlad going down with some injuries. Same thing with Kenny Morales now after the season and Eric Ibar heard him that slide at second base. And the guys have responded well. They did so right when Kendrick got hurt. They went out and played outstanding baseball on the road. Now they had to do the same with Eric. May not be available for a bit. Rivera in the hole at no balls in his track. And be sure to visit Farmers.com today to hear more true stories from Farmers customers and to find a SoCal agent near you. Marlins had a 2-1 lead going into the ninth inning. Josh Johnson looking for the victory. And Leo Nunez gave it up. He's the closer for the Marlins. In the two runs in the ninth inning. Rivera picks this one out into center field. Edmund playing shallow as always makes the catch. There are two outs. We bring that up because if the Rangers with their win. The Angels lose this one. All of a sudden two games back still early. Still plenty of time. Things get magnified as you start looking at the standings with the injury of Kendry, and the injury to Eric Ibar. You start to worry a little bit. And rightfully so. I mean, I, Mike Sosha knows the roster, knows the depth in the farm system, just like Tony Regans does, but everyone else sitting at home may not necessarily. The bunt up the third baseline, Franzen will reach. So bunt single for Franzen puts a man on with two outs. I've seen Franzen do this a couple of times. Nice job of getting that baseball down the line. A lot of times in a situation when you're down by six, you need base runners. Most times with two outs, you always think a line. Of, well, the reason why you bunt there, you're hoping either he steals a bag or you're relying on someone else to drive you in from at that point at first base. But you want to see a double or an opportunity to be able to score some runs here in a hurry with one swing of bat from Brandon. Brandon Wood takes a strike. Back in the lineup off the disabled list. Got into 13 games at Salt Lake. They have rehab assignment, 196 average, couple of home runs, a couple of RBIs. Dealing with that hip flexor. There goes Franzen, and this one's cued off the end of the bat, right to Dave Bush. There's out number three. Two of the books here at the Big A. It is 6-0 Milwaukee. Bill Engel will join us in the top of the third.
takes a strike from Urban Santana. It's our pleasure to welcome into the booth with the blue collar comedy tour, Bill Engel. Thank Huge, you. big time Angels fan. Big time. And you know, I just know that Craig is uh, Craig kind of mellowed out on his stance. He used to have, maybe he used to have that straight up. Yeah. Straight up, and I would watch him and go, there's no way he's going to get around to the ball. Maybe and the bat head has slowed down a little bit. He's going out. He's got to get down a little bit further down. <laughs> hey, somehow he's figured it out, though. 39 I mean, years old yeah, and yeah, he's no still kid. in the big leagues? No kidding. Well, that's, that's like a uh, Sweeney. Uh, when we were at the spring training, I was asking uh, George Brett, uh, whatever happened to Mike Sweeney. So, uh, yeah. Mike and I uh, got to go. Got to be really good friends, and they said, "You're not going to believe this." He goes, "They were going to offer him like a player coach AAA thing," and he comes up to spring training, and he's batting average like five seventy five. Yeah, he forces we had the to team. Sign him. Exactly. <laughs> well, he did, he's done a nice job for Seattle. I mean, well, he really still, has. He does, I mean, the, the home run power is going away from him with his back issues, but he's a guy that gives you a professional at bat. Oh yeah, you're gonna you've got guys on base. He's going to bring them in uh, with a single or a, you know slap a double. He's, the, uh, hey, what's the uh, what's the report on Ibor? I haven't heard yet. We haven't heard yet either. We're waiting for the report. The MRI is happening. We haven't gotten the results. Yeah, McGee didn't do much to uh, really uh, get himself in with the Angel fans. Well, what are you going to do? It's it's the <laughs> it's nature nine to of, two the, of the business. Right? Nine to two game. Of course, you need to roll into the shortstop <laughs> because it was there was a good chance we were coming back on that one. This one out towards left center field. Rivera is there. Council looks like he's going to tag and he'll stop though because. Rivera's got a pretty good arm, and there he's out number one. Will you write about that? Because you now have a new blog mm-hmm. on FoxSportsWest.com. I do Obviously, have a blog. Having grown up as an Angel fan, you're going to talk about baseball and the Angels. Well, you know, what I wanted to do, and I was really honored that Fox Sports uh, came to me about this, was that I wanted to get uh, a fan's point of view uh, of, of the game. You know, I mean, you guys do such a great job, but you guys all played the game. And, you know, there's a lot of us who, you know, were just little leaguers and, and stuff. So some of the stuff... The fans may not agree with me because uh, I'm, I'm fixing to write one right now called uh, There's an Enemy in My House. And because uh, the one thing that drives me crazy is, you know, when you come home, for, when the team comes home from home game, you, you want it to be your fans are there. But if we were playing Boston, Angel fans all sell their tickets. So I'm going to get on them a little bit about that. If you're a fan, then come to the game. You, you know, Because I guarantee Yankee fans don't sell their tickets to Red Sox fans. And all that, and that, and, and we got it. We really got to get rid of the beach balls. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck what, with that. What happened to the days when you came to a game to watch? That's my stuff, by the way. But yeah, you came to a game to watch the game. You know, it's like uh, become a tradition out here. You're here in Dodger <sighs> Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it started out here. <laughs> yeah, because exactly. they go through your bags and stuff. You can't bring water or stuff in, but how do you bring a beach ball in? The, the fans are out our seat. They, they, they're not they're not big fans of mine. Because uh, if the beach ball comes my way, I just hand it right back to the usher. <laughs> oh, you're, you're that guy. I'm that you? guy. Nice. <laughs> nice. Is that your son's beach ball? <laughs> <laughs> so I get to hang out with you. I get to write a blog, too. On yeah, that I read them and read your blog. Yeah. I, uh, I, got, I got a lot of competition. You, you got that inside scoop. I'm just like a goof that, you know. <laughs> Uh, but like uh, you know, I did the first one I did was just about being introduced to the, uh, how I got to be in with the Angels, and then uh, the second one uh, is, is entitled "So You Think You Can Play with the Big Boys," uh, because I'm always amazed when I hear fans go, "Oh, you could have caught that," or "He should have hit that pitch," and I was that guy till I went to fantasy camp, <laughs> and then I realized, just sit back and enjoy the game. <laughs> how, how often are you going to contribute? Uh, I'm going to try to do once a week. Uh, we're going to like the same schedule Gooby's on. Yeah, I'm always struggling for some help. <laughs> <laughs> call you Gooby and I will be calling you. What are you writing about this week? Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do that on the plane with all of us. <laughs> what, what should I what? write about? I mean, he's not sitting there on his iPad just cutting it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Every every time I said, oh, i got to write this tonight, get it in by midnight, be able to get it out on Monday morning. <laughs> That's like with my stand-up. I never write what I dream about because in my dream it's always so hysterical. <laughs> and then when I wake up, I go, what was I thinking? That is just not even close to being funny. That's been some of the things I've read that you were supposed to Yeah. <laughs> you don't say there's some evil thing going in your mind. I said there's something going in my head, and I have no idea what's going on. Are you? I, I meant to ask you if you're okay. Uh, I know you had that whole week in Kansas City and having to deal with all the people. Oh, fans. my goodness. You that, should have seen the rugged? signs and the parades. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. parade. Yeah, that, that's always a big. It was a gooby love fest. <laughs> yeah. Gooby day, gooby day in Kansas City is great. It's just, you know, I, was, I wasn't old enough to experience Woodstock, <laughs> but being in Kansas but go- City, yeah. it was pretty close. Gooby stock is yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, Woodstock was bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I went to 
called it Gooby Stock one time. You could have called it Livestock, but it was. It was <laughs> Stop me if you've heard these. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Ricky Weeks working the walk with two outs here. Council will. Yeah, we haven't lately. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't done enough to, 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 to front up six runs. <laughs> We'll see if we get it out here. I, you know what, though? I got to tell you, I, I am a, such a huge. I love this team. Whether they're losing or whether they're winning, uh, it's just such a fun team to watch. And, uh, you know, when, they, when they're really clicking, uh, it's just an amazing team. Uh, I, I, I was emailing Butcher early on the season. Uh, I was teasing about getting hair transplants. And I said, probably it's a good thing you didn't get them because you would have pulled them out by now. <laughs> I don't know how these coaches, they have to have the patience of Joe. You know, I mean, they just, what do you, he's got to play the game. And uh, it's still the best game on the planet. I, I got to tell you. The, and, the, and the other great thing is, and I'll even take the beach balls. Thank God we don't have those soccer horns. I was trying, I was trying to watch some of that World Cup, and I kept going, there's an amazing number of bees <laughs> right by the crowd, Mike. It's one heck of a swarm. <laughs> isn't got, it? They got a killer bees all over. The we had a swarm down here before the game, down on that camera on the on the net. <laughs> what happened? Whatever happened to the bird? Did, weren't you getting dive bombed by that bird? Yeah, that was, yeah, he's, <laughs> he was crazy. There's the bees. Oh, the oh bees. my gosh! Look at the bees. Yeah. Oh, so what do you do? You don't call it exterminate. Just pull the vacuum out. Now, that's why we have the word intern. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm not a big wow. fan of bees either. No, you know? no, no, no. <laughs> Heights, bees, just about everything there is. But yeah, but yeah, it's going to be fun doing this blog. More pitches on the inside part of the plate, which you don't get called a strike. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other, the one I, I really wanted to do one, uh, because I do feel like there's become a a trend that I'm not a big fan of uh, with the umpiring. Is I kind of feel like they're trying to take over the game as opposed to just being a part, I mean, I, I understand it's a hard, hard job. I mean, I wouldn't want to, you know, I, I wouldn't want to call the bang, bang play at first place, at first base. And stuff. But it just seems like there's, uh, and it's, it's not just baseball. I've noticed it in, bas- in the basketball playoffs. And just, it just kind of seems like there's this almost a godlike, like, we'll, we make the call and you just deal with it. Right. And, I, you know, it's like the other day with the uh, the kid uh, throwing the, the no perfect game. Going out go. I think that they should have reviewed that. Yeah, I think in a, in a situation like that where it's something that that big, they take the time and make it make the call right. You know, and, the, and the guy handled it right. Do you want to stick around for a little bit? I would love to. All right. Six nothing Milwaukee. More Bill. Yeah, I like that think of the football people. Bottom of the third here at the Big A. Top of the order, Meister Sturis. Waiting things off. Takes a breaking ball from Dave Bush. Sturis, Kendrick, and Abreu. Angels have managed just two hits in this ball game. Both. One each, I should say, in the first two innings. 
Milwaukee scoring two in the first, four in the second. Bill Engel still here. Meister Sturz sharply hit to Craig Council. Which out number one. I got to ask you about your first time here to the Big A and mm -hmm. when you became an Angel fan. Uh, it, I go back to the 60s. Uh, my family and I took, we lived in Winslow, Arizona, believe it or not. And my family took the train out here to go to Disneyland. And uh, this was, of course, back for cell phones and all this stuff. So my dad and I were going to the store to get a little beer or something. And because uh, we always slept better when we've been drinking as kids. And uh, the, uh, we got in his cab, and his taxi driver said, hey, do you guys do anything tonight? My dad said, no, we're not doing anything. He goes, I got two tickets to California Angels. So we came to the, uh, it was, I think it was like 65. And uh, it was my first major league game. And uh, as I mentioned in my blog, it was just, I was a, I've always been a baseball fanatic. Uh, I'm not a stats guy, but I'm a baseball fan. I love the game. Sure. And uh, so to walk into, you know, Anaheim Stadium when you're a little, little leaguer, it just, it was amazing. Is my favorite pitcher on the mound there, Dean Chance? You know, I, you've got, I, I'm on the Dean Chance bandwagon. There you go. Way to go. I got it's so over, easy I, to get sucked I, I, in. I, I got it? pulled over by the cops <laughs> and the, the California Highway Patrol the other day, and he says, is this your name, Ingo? And I said, actually, no, I'm Dean Chance. <laughs> and he let me go. He goes, you know Gooby? And I said, I got Gooby stock every time, every Gooby year. Gooby stock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what, one of these days we're going to have Those one here. Those bands. Oh, oh, come oh. on. Yeah, well, sure. <laughs> One way to Ozzy Osbourne down the screen yeah. down with us. When Gooby does there, when he does his version of Girls Just Want to Have Fun, I mean, it brings the house down. It's, it's hard to. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point forward, you were you were. Hoping. I was an Angel fan. I've been, you know, I just, you know, fans from Reggie Jackson, to, you know. Uh, 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 I'll tell you a great story of. Uh, Clyde right when I went to fantasy camp, and I just love Clyde. Do you uh, eat his barbecue? I have not eaten his barbecue yet. The, so uh, you don't really love him that much. No, 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 no. That's what you're saying. No. I, love, I love him until the check clears. And then, it's, <laughs> then he's just another fan. The, uh, but anyway, so uh, years ago, I met Nolan Ryan at a charity event. And so one day I was sitting in my house and I was doing interviews. And in between interviews, my phone rang. And uh, they just moved. I said, yeah, and he goes, there's Nolan around. I'm like, shut up. I go, okay, okay, Nolan, whatever. You know, And he kept talking. I go, oh, my God, this is Nolan Ryan. <laughs> I go, like, Nolan Ryan, like, like the no hitting, no one could hit Nolan Ryan and beat that's not out of Robin Ventura, Nolan Ryan. He goes, <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's up? He goes, why don't you come play the golf term? I go, let me think. Okay. <laughs> But he, uh, I still got to see Nolan because I got to get him to sign that. I have that picture of him wailing and dropping the tour with the blood on his shirt. Bobby Bray thought he had himself a right, wall. See, that's what I'm talking about here. This is if he had, if, you know, this is the thing I think players. Gonna, and I don't know, Gooby, you mentioned this. If a player flips his bat like that before the umpire makes a call, does that tend to make the umpire want to go? Yeah, you're not going to go. If, if you're uh, if you're up at the plate right now, Bill, don't you think you got to swing at anything thrown out of the pitcher's hand after that one? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, even I would, though Bobby has that reputation of having a good eye, and that was uh, a clear indication that he thought that was ball four. <laughs> well, this is the difference between me and a major league ball player. These guys are willing to take two strikes because they know they can hit the ball. Buddy, I was swinging at everything that would come across the plate. Well, he strokes this one out to left field. Braun is in to one, two, three inning. Bill, we appreciate it, man. It's going to be great. Come on out. Can't to wait the to read it. Check out the blog. And, uh, Can't we read it. We'll we need you to sign the wall on the way out. Sign the wall and come to the All-Star game. Absolutely. Through three, Milwaukee's still up 6 nothing.
Time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. Ryan Braun with the bases loaded gets a changeup off Joe Saunders, hits him in a rock pile for a grand slam last night. To talk to Joe Saunders about that pitch. He said it wasn't a bad pitch. It might not have been the right pitch to throw. He thought back on it now. He thought maybe I should have threw a fastball sinker instead of a changeup to speed up his bat. And that was the result. Ryan Braun again. Third grand slam of his career. That's not the hat that they gave away today, by the way. It's Fedora night. Although that would be a sweet giveaway. That would be a good one. There they go. It's a nice looking hat. Without question, a great looking hat. It's even better when you can put three of them on. Now, I want to pass along this note, by the way. Longtime Angel fan, Daniel Lee Sweeney, diagnosed with leukemia back on May 25th. And since it is Fedora night, just a hats off to Danny, who's over at Long Beach Memorial Hospital. Keep your awesome, positive attitude going. Love you here from the Angel family. Uh, no question. Good luck. Pulling for you. Braun, Fielder, and McGee here in the fourth. Breaks his bat and rolls in a high seat. Now, he's out number one. Time now for the AT&T trivia question. Looks like this. Torrey Hunter, Jim Edmonds are two of seven Gold Glove center fielders in Angels history. Who are the others? Hurstead. That's a good guess. Pettis. Devon White. White, Prince, over to Howie Kendrick from shallow right field. Or two outs. Well, this is something that Irvin certainly could use. An easy one, two, three inning. And plenty of time for the Angels to get back in this ball game. You keep throwing off some zeros. You have a shot. That 36 pitches in that second inning. The command was not there. It gives up four runs. After even the first inning, gets the first two easy outs and before long, there's two runs against them in that. Home run by Prince Fielder the other way. Casey McGee's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Four punch outs for Santana, but the eight hits and the six runs, not good. At least through the first three innings. Looking a little bit sharper here in the fourth. That pitch is down and in. It's one and one. That second inning just snowballed with four straight hits to start that inning. McGee hits one out toward deep left field. Rivera at the track makes the catch, and there's a one, two, three inning. Brewers going down in order. It is six nothing Milwaukee. Bill Engel side of the wall behind us. Hopefully that'll get things going.
More than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. And by Carl's Jr. Introducing the Hawaiian Teriyaki Chicken Sandwich with grilled pineapple and teriyaki sauce. New at Carl's Jr. Brewers up 6-0 here in the bottom of the fourth. Victor Rojas along with Mark Kubison. Tori Hunter to lead things off here gets Dave Bush. First pitch is just outside. Bush, one strikeout, no walks. He's uh, just two hits. Coming off a 1-2-3 inning, his first of this ball game. He needs hit as it's got to get him out of that stretch position. Take away that big curveball. Doesn't get as good an angle from that position. Escobar. Drifting back on that one to play the big hop and retires Tory for out number one. And just a reminder to go to FoxSportsWest.com to vote for the Angels' top memorable moment that you'd like to see replay here on Fox Sports West. So one out, bases clear for Hideki Matsui. Dave Bush. Working just like Randy Wolf did. A lot of off speed, keeping everyone off balance. That's who he over one. He grounded it short this first at bat. Kind of a weird play, too, considering he was hit off the end of the bat and hit off the side of the mound. But Escobar made a nice play. He's got a strong arm, he can recover. Self position, make that throw with that type of arm. Uh, with Hideki and the struggles he's had with his knees, as far as you know, he doesn't run that well anymore. Bought him some time. One ball, two strikes. Nothing fancy about either Randy Wolf or Dave Bush, but close enough to being around the strike zone. Tantalizing. Almost to the point where you start expanding your strike zone. You know, coming into this game, he had 32 walks in 64 innings, so he has a tendency to get wild, but when you're up there hacking early in the count and get some outs, he's changing speeds very well, so you've got to give him credit for that. Spotting the fastball, going to slow curve, a slider, makes it a change up against the left handed batters. Been pretty solid so far. This one's down to left field line. Braun, a good jump on it, makes the catch. There's out number two. Ryan's really done a nice job of converting out to the left field position. A couple of years ago, that rookie campaign, he's also a guy that came up to the third baseman. But Having to learn it. Makes a great jump, at least what we've seen here the first game and a half. Well, until he, you know, got acclimated to left field, he was playing deep in left field, so that allows you to come in on the ball, which is much easier to do than going back on the baseball. And you see that first step. Very good athlete, so when you get, read the baseball off the bat, you're able to make those plays, particularly when you're playing a little bit deeper than most outfielders you would see. Napoli swings the first pitch and bounces one over to McGee. And it's another one, two, three inning. Four to books here at the Big A. Brewers in charge right now, up six nothing.
eight TNT trivia question. Tori and Jim with two of the seven gold gloves. Angel center fielders of that. Who are the other five guys? Ken Berry, Rick Miller, Gary Pettis, Devon White, and Darren Erstad. Well, when you have center fielders who can control that outfield, make those plays, win gold gloves, this makes your pitching staff that much more aggressive. Edmonds swinging at the first pitch and fouling one off into the seats on the third base side. Jim's one for two. He had a single and a fly ball to left. Edmonds fouling this one off the left, and it's one ball, two strikes. Just got word on Eric Ibar's injury. Ibar, according to the MRI, suffered some meniscal damage, and he'll be reevaluated on Friday. Edmonds ripping this one into the alley and right center field. That will one hop the wall. Going into second base, a throw from Abreu is. Just a little bit late. It's a double for Jim Edmonds. His 13th of the year, and the leadoff man is on board. So going back to Eric Einbar, the meniscal tear, it all depends on how much damage there is. And only saying it because we've had it in both knees, both minor tears and major tears. These both times have been taken care of with arthroscopies, which don't typically last or take that long to recover from. But Who knows? Certainly a little different news than anticipated. Council lining one to second. There's out number one. Edmonds stays at home at second base. Is that an injury at times? I think you can rehab it too and strengthen the area around there. If it's not torn up too bad, it won't be that much of a difference for them as far as getting back out there quicker than, than they hope. Here's Dr. Yoakum next to Tony Regan's in there. I'm sure they're discussing strategy or how long possibly could be out. One with Ken Forsh, assistant general manager. Luke Roy, the catcher, takes a strike. One for two with a single to fly ball to left. See the numbers having hit safely in seven of his eight career big league games. Just hasn't been up a whole lot. That pitch missing inside. It's one ball, two strikes. Napoli's going to go out and talk to Santana. Don't know if that was a cross up or or what. But when you got an 0 2 count, all of a sudden you see a guy deliver a, a pitch that misses like that. You get a catcher going out there. You know, that tells you the other, they weren't on the same page. Irvin's thrown 92 pitches thus far. That is first one, two, three in the fourth. And this one's out into center field. Just has not been able to finish it. As Edmonds this time will just jog over to third. Oh, man. Talk about saving your energy. <laughs> no doubt about it. He just figured, you know what? I've got no chance of scoring. I'll just jog to third base. Well, the Brewers have runners at first and third with one away now. And Escobar coming to the plate. At this point, the Angels cannot afford to give up any more runs. Dave Bush, granted, not overpowering. has pitched very well so far in this game. Big uphill battles it is. Six runs down. You cannot give up any more. You need a punch out or a double play right here. Now, ten hits allowed by Irvin Santana. Only Weeks and McGee haven't recorded a hit. Escobar had an RBI single in the second inning. 
Hit a fly ball to center in the third. Chasing that breaking pitch. No balls, two strikes. Reaching for that and fouling that one off, spoiling a pretty good pitch. There goes the runner, the throw, and there's the interference. Nope. Angel Campo saying that there was no interference, but Mike Napoli clearly, clearly ran into Escobar, who struck out and fell across the plate. And Angel Campos immediately making the call. I wonder if he can get help from John Hurstbeck, who's walking down from first base. I mean, Escobar swung at that breaking pitch with Lucroy breaking for second. Mike immediately came out. It wasn't one of those reaching out and making contact with the hitter. And he was out in front of him. And obviously affected the throw down to second base. John Hurstbeck now jumping in here. Well, when you're not allowed to throw the ball to second base as a catcher after you receive the pitch, that's interference. Look, man, if you're an umpire, you're not going to win this argument when you've got a big league, former big league catcher doing the argument, especially on a play such as that. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, and he falls out in front of the plate. That's interference. Make contact with the, the, the batter. Especially, you know, it's a fastball. He was in his kitchen with the pitch, but falling out over the plate, there's no way you can follow through if you're a catcher in that position. Lucroy picks up his stolen base. And there are two outs now, and here's Ricky Weeks. Weeks go for two, and the ground ball is short. A strikeout, and he drew a walk. The strikeout of Escobar, the fifth now for Urban Santana to go with two walks. And a toe and two. Weeks didn't think that was a strike. Looked a little bit up and in. He has been calling that pitch throughout the ball game. But again, like I said, consistency. That's a pitch already 100. Urban Santana. Nice block by Napoli. Orlando Mercado answering the phone. The Angels bullpen coach start to get some action going out there. Two balls, two strikes. Scott Shields getting ready to get loose. More than likely the last inning for Urban Santana. Hopefully no more damage here to get through the inning. Hard hit but foul behind it, Jimmy Edwards. Breaking ball, got him looking down to Weeks, and the inning comes to an end. Nice job by Santana, got into some damage, but got out of it. Middle of the fifth, it is 6 0 Milwaukee.
The Angels down six to nothing. And still trying to figure out Dave Bush has retired the last seven in a row since giving up that bunt single to Kevin Franzen in the second inning. Not the prettiest of lines for Urban Santana, but gone five innings, soaked up some of the, the innings necessary with a somewhat shortened bullpen. Bottom third to up, Rivera, Franzen, and Wood. Juan probably takes a strike. With the end is still in the midst of that 19 straight game. We get some extra innings out of Urban Santana when you didn't look like it was going to get that. First two innings have given up six runs. Last three, three zeros. Juan hit a fly ball to center in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. Shallow right center field, the leadoff man is on board. Hey, whatever works. That'll bring up Franzen. Hey, fans, come out to the Angels game on Saturday, June 26th. That's when all kids ages 2 to 18 here at the ballpark will receive a free peanut 60th anniversary Snoopy bobblehead, courtesy of Knott's Berry Farm Camp Snoopy. Purchase your tickets at angelsbaseball.com. There's Snoopy. Good looking beagle. Had a beagle when I was a kid. They love beagles. Francis swing at the first pitch. Grounds with a McGee. Feeds Townsville. Relay in time. Double play. <laughs> Boy, if your day goes at exactly what you wanted, for a one pitch ground ball double play. He is on the other side. Knee base runners instead. All of a sudden, you look up instead of having a potential rally going on. All of a sudden, there's no one on and two outs. Kevin obviously unhappy with himself. Perhaps a, a little over aggressive in a situation where you're, you're down by six runs, middle part of the game. You're trying to kind of scratch out one or two, maybe even three runs, trying to create some sort of rally. Jumping on that first pitch. Brandon hooks one down the left field line, but foul. One ball, two strikes. Brandon hit a comebacker to Bush in the second. Two go for one. Tough time making that adjustment from the minor leagues to the major leagues. And, and the reality is, you got to have the mindset of just driving the baseball. When fastball counts, let go of those tough sliders in the dirt, and you can be more successful. It's a tough pitch to swing at right there. That's a breaking ball in the dirt. Nothing happening for the Angels here in the fifth. Five of the books. Milwaukee still in control.
freeze cam. Escobar out over in front of the plate on that swing and miss by Mike Napoli impeding his throw in the second base. Looks for the catcher's interference. The base runner should have been out at second base. You need contact. That was a big thing. The foot that Mike Napoli hit Escobar's foot. That's contact, and that should have been called, but it wasn't. And that was our Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Time now for the in and out, who's in, who's out. Scott Shields takes over for Urban Santana. A 686 ERA for Scott Shields. The last pitch on the 10th of June. Five days ago in Oakland, went one inning, struck out two, but gave up a run on a walk. Urban Santana, five innings, six strikeouts, two walks, six runs all earned on 10 hits. Scott facing two, three, and four. Hart, Braun, and Fielder. Schedule three batters. Two quick strikes on Corey Hart, who's one for three. Had a double in the second inning. Didn't miss by much, dropping down a little bit. Well, that was that double two by Hart. It looked like Urban had a chance to get through that inning. A couple real good sliders in a row, down and away. He had him swinging, then he... Overthrew one, then hangs the slider. They made him pay. That's another good pitch by Shields. He may be off by half a baseball at the most off the outside corner. Another 2-2. Fastball. Got him looking. Hart was walking toward the dugout. There is out number one. If you take a look at the Haynes comfort zone for tonight. ERA by Angel Starters this year. In the 36 victories, a 214 ERA, 31 losses, 744. Well, generally you're gonna it's gonna be a scenario where obviously when you win games, your team area as far as the starting pitch is gonna be lower. From the losses, but it's the reality. You got to find ways through games in which you don't have your best stuff to minimize damage. You're going to have games you give up three, four runs. You want to keep it at that. Give your offense a chance to get back. But when you go you fall behind six nothing, and up losing the game last night nine to two. It's I mean twelve to two. It's tough to come back. Ryan Braun is one for two. Single with a run scored in the first inning. Scott falling behind him at two balls in his track. Good crowd here on the Fedora night. Given away. Presented by Yokohama. Little tapper. Napoli and Shields just don't communicate. And Braun will reach on the infield single. It's a pretty good pitch. Good movement on that pitch by Scott Shields. It's a situation where it's a pitch you're going for that baseball, but you see Mike Napa trying to call you off, and then it checked up and had spin on it. Easier play though for a pitcher to be able to come in and make that play and throw over because the catcher's got to run out there and then spin around, then throw the first base. There's Prince Fielder had that two run home run in the first inning to put Milwaukee up to nothing. Shield delivers a strike. Brewers with six runs, 11 hits. They've stranded seven. The Angels, no runs, three hits, one error. And they've left three on base. Good pitch on the corner, 2 and 2. You can see it's there for Scott Shields, that movement on the fastball. 
just trying to stay that consistent arm slot to throw strike after strike. The fastball inside to throw at the hip and bring it to the inside corner. That's out toward deep left field, but playable for Rivera. Got it in just enough. In on the hands, there's out number two. And that late move, but you can see how strong Chris Fielder is to be able to hit him all that far when the ball was on the inner half of the plate. Very quick hands inside. Here's Casey McGee, who's 0 for 3. Snap third of first. Bronze back. A couple of strikeouts for McGee. A fly ball to left. Scott still trying to get back into the mix as far as throwing consistently. Not only well, just one night, but back to back bases. And she has flips it over the first. And there's out number three. Nice inning for Scott here in the sixth. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Angels down 6 0. is brought to you by AT&T. TV, high-speed internet, home phone, and wireless. Visit at at and or call 1-800-PICK-AT&T for details. And by your Southern California Ford dealers, where you'll find the new Transit Connect. Check it out at SCFordDealers.com. Beautiful shot up above the Big A. It's 6-0 Milwaukee here at the bottom of the sixth. Top of the order now for the Halos is Sturis, Kendrick, and Abreu. It's Dave Bush who's done a nice job tonight. Guy who was off to a terrific start at the beginning of last year. Probably the Brewers' best pitcher at the beginning of the year last year, the first two months. Then a game against the Florida Marlins in which he got drilled right behind the, the right elbow. Just above it, then a slight little tear in the tricep muscle. The ball hit off the bat of Hanley Ramirez, and from that point forward, just wasn't the same guy. That's why his numbers were skewed last year from an ERA standpoint. Meister going the opposite way, lines with the Casey McGee, and there's out number one. Take a look at our Lexus pursuing perfection. We'll take a look at our American League All Star leaders. Different names in there. You got Nelson Cruz. The Rangers, Justin Morneau leading in at first base. Joe Maurer getting the most votes so far in the American League. At over two and a half million votes in Vlad, the age. Alexis pursuing perfection. 
Seems like every one of those guys very well deserving of the recognition. Nelson Cruz, maybe not as much. A couple of stints on the disabled list with the hamstring problems. And that guy at shortstop, I don't think we've heard too much about him leading the boats. Derek Jeter? Yeah. Kendrick is out number two. Robinson Cano, being in second base, has had some great numbers so far. Yeah. Notice any Red Sox in the leaders. This is unusual. It is, isn't it? We must always see the Red Sox, somebody in there, at least one or two. The Braves 0 for 2 with a ground ball to second, a fly ball to left. He's in that third inning at bat with Bobby took a 3 1 pitch where he thought it actually worked ball four. Wasn't the case. Ended up pinning that fly out to left field. Yeah, you look at Dave Bush, he doesn't waste any time in between pitches. Starts that fastball around 86, 87, the outside corner with a slow curveball. Staying down in the zone the majority of the time. Twelve scoreless innings. So far for the Angels, going back to that two runs that they picked up in the second. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but the way this team was going on that road trip, the amount of runs and the number of hits they were getting stands out a little bit as Bobby takes a strike and it's two and two. On the ground is short. Escobar's got the skimmer, and it's a another one, two, three inning. Six in the books. Milwaukee up six nothing. Nothing in the seventh will do to an Angel fan right there. I don't think the Fedora will look real good on that. Could be wrong. That thing shot up with the four straight hits the Brewers knocked down in the second. Edmonds, Council, Lucroy. The same guys that started things off. Imagine what will happen to that dude. Scott Shields had a 
Very easy sixth inning giving up a base hit. But also picking up a strikeout. Well, that was a real nice curveball. It's a spot now where Scott Shields will throw that two seam fastball in at the hip of a left hand and try to get the inside corner. Edmonds has swung the bat well. A couple of hits, two for three with a single and a double. He foul tips one into the mitt. Down it goes for out number one. Take a look at our Land Rover game summary. We gave you the American League All Star voting. What about the National League? Ryan Broad out in left field. Jason Hayward, the rookie for Atlanta, leading Andre Ethier. Blanco for the Phils, third base. Molina, so good behind the play as far as throwing. Lasso Polanco at third base. Say it ain't started, so. He started off with some great numbers, but it's slowed down. They're drawing a lot of fans here at Citizen Bank Park, so they're stuck in the ballot box there. Oh, so there you go. That's what it boils down to. The Phils have been struggling. Losing tonight. Was that CC Sabathia Roy Halliday matchup that didn't work out so well for the Phils? Or the Fightins, as they call them. Well, it's nice of you to point that out, Victor. Oh. It's an all encompassing show. <laughs> Council grounding one over to short. Meister on the transit, and there's out number two. Blanco's hitting 319 at least. Well, just in case you didn't hear what I said, there's the Yankees beating the Phillies 8 to 3. Well, the New York Mets, they've been playing exceptional baseball of late. Jerry Manuel loving his job now as he beats Cleveland 7 to 6. Interleague action in full steam right now. Oakland's leading the Chicago Cubs out of Wrigley Field. Chicago, another one of those teams that's underachieving this season so far. This one on the ground to the right side. Howie, nice play going to his left. And Scott Shields with a 1 2 3 inning. Seventh inning stretch time here at the Big A. Angels trying to get it going against Dave Bush. Bottom of the seventh. And I think I think it's about time Buttercup actually did something for the Angels. I think, I think the Angels are going to score some runs here. Buttercup inspiring the fans. 
Mentioned a good crowd still around. Hoping to see a little rally here in the last couple of innings. One problem, well, it's been a number of problems for Milwaukee so far this season, but their bullpen has been an issue. You got to get to that bullpen somehow, some way. Bullpen ERA 581. But they haven't been able to throw up those zeros when called upon. Well, they've got Hunter Matsui and Napoli here in the seventh. Ground of the right side, long run over for Council. Bush is going to have to cover the high field. Gets by Luke goes all the way to the backstop. Tory just now recognizes the fact that he can advance and he will do so. And once Prince Fielder kind of broke to his right, Council did a heck of a job of getting to that ball. It's just like a quarterback leading a receiver. You're going to have to lead Dave Bush, and the throw sailed over the head of Dave Bush. Especially because he also he had to throw it over. Prince Fielder's head too on this play. Just off the end of the bat, another breaking pitch. Tory going down the line. And just looped it up there. Tried to lead this lane the first, but too high of a throw. Maybe that's the break the Eagles could get here and get something rolling. Infield single for Tor and an error on Council. There is a strike on Hideki Matsui. The Angels have had a man in scoring position. Now he's back in the first inning. But Howie Kendrick had that double and was stranded at third. Matsui 0 for 2. The ground ball is short and a fly ball to left. Tory is thrown out at third base. Well, that's a spot there for Tory Hunter or base runner in general. If you're going to steal, and the Angels are always aggressive, you have to make sure you have a huge lead and, and a great jump. But especially with a left-handed batter, you have a free, clear throw to third base. The biggest question is why. Of what benefit in a 6 nothing game does it do you to steal third base? Matsui takes it down. It's one ball, two strikes. It's been that kind of game, though. From all the hits given up by Santana to the catcher's interference. The miscommunication on that little dribbler in front of the mound the, between Shields and Napoli. Hey, you just got to be content with base runners. You need a bunch of them to get back in the game. You can't afford to give up an out, especially when you're trying to get back and the guy is hitting his spots throughout the game that Dave Bush has done. Matsu has gone from 0-2 to 3-2. Line shot off the glove of Bush. Matsui will reach on an infield single. Hey, fans, your Angels will be hosting the division rival Texas Rangers on Wednesday, June 30th. All fans in attendance for this game will receive a free Joe Saunders bobblehead doll courtesy of Banco Popular. 
two-year halos on the victory against Texas Rangers. Get that first Saunders bobblehead. Make sure you get those tickets at angelsbaseball.com. Dave Bush is all right. Taking that liner back up the middle. That Saunders bobblehead. It's a pretty cool bobblehead. We got saw that down there by the dugout today. Napoli takes down low. Mike so for two with a ground out and a strikeout. That one's on the corner. One ball, one strike. Had the breaking ball there, 68 mile an hour pitch. Well, that that's one of those slow pitches where you have to try to keep your hands back and just try to drive at the right center field if you might not be able to have that kind of power that you can drive it out. So that highest fastball in the game so far for Dave Bush, 88 mile an hour. So that early in the ball game, still flipping that curveball in at 67 range. Napoli skying one to right field. Two outs. Big Cameron Lowe's up and loosely down for Milwaukee. Rick Peterson in his first year as the pitching coach of the Milwaukee Brewers. Formerly the Oakland A's and New York Mets. Well, nice job with his pitches telling him to throw strikes and work it down in his own these two games. Ernie Wolf and Dave Bush have certainly not overpowered the hitters, but they've hit their spots. Change speeds very well, change the eye level on occasion. Right, come under fire. He's come under fire anyways because the pitching staff overall has not performed up to, I guess, what their expectations were. A 5.17 team ERA. One of the guys that the Brewers just let go, signed by the St. Louis Cardinals, got the start for St. Louis tonight as Rivera puts one out on the left. Supine going four innings, allowing just one run as the Cardinals beat the Seattle Mariners again, 4 2. Through seven here at the Big A, it's all Milwaukee.
six nothing Milwaukee. We go back to our Hyundai keys to the game. Boy, Irving Santana didn't have that sweet music going today. After the first two innings, Milwaukee scored six. He settled down for three zeros after that, but he had demand issues with that slider. That was a big issue for Irving tonight because his slider has been so good coming into the game tonight. ERA at two four eight and six starts with a five and one mark. So that slider went away from him today. You see Francisco Rodriguez taking over for Scott Shields, who went two good innings, striking out two and allowing one hit. Young fans oblivious to what the scoreboard says, just still having fun here. Wonder which which she enjoys more, Buttercup or Steve Miller Band? The first pitch by Rodriguez is lifted into center field for a base hit. Escobar with his second hit of the game. He's certainly one of the positive Scott Shields when he threw the baseball today. Real good command of his fastball. His curveball was very good. Here's Ricky Weeks. Weeks 0 for 3 with a walk. A couple of strikeouts. Brewers now with 12 hits on the night on the heels of the 12 hits they had last night. Weeks ran the start at second base last night, serving as the DH tonight. McGee playing at third base. Rodriguez delivers a strike. It's one and one. Brewers certainly an interesting bunch in that their schedule, or at least their, their record, anyways. It's kind of reverse of what most teams. Most teams typically play pretty good baseball at home. Brewers have not been that typical team. They must be 11 and 19 at Miller Park this year, but on the verge, if they pick up this one, a game under 500 away from Miller Park. Surprising considering the fan support to get there at that stadium. Well over 3 million. That one bouncing in front of the dirt. Nothing Napoli could do. That thing shot over his head. And a wild pitch puts Escobar in a scoring position. You ever have teams in which it was one sided one way or the other? Oh, a lot of times in, in Kansas City, even though you feel you felt you had advantage, especially you know in the big ballpark like that was it with AstroTurf at that point and the speed on the club, you would be much more effective at home, but that was not the case. For whatever reason, more comfortable on the road because you can hit some home runs. Difficult to hit the ball out of the ballpark when your team doesn't have a ton of power in that big stadium like that. Count remains to two balls, two strikes. The Angels rolled into this one 16 and 14 here at the Big A. Get a big long stretch out on the road and playing much better. Turn their record around. 20 and 17 on the road. And now it gets weeks. A hit batter. Puts a man on. We've seen more hit batters in the first two games of the series than we did in the last week to two weeks. Again, that's a situation where you're certainly not trying to hit anybody. It's, it's that release point and inconsistency in the pitcher's mechanics. These first couple of games, you're trying to get that fastball in the inner half. You drop that elbow, you're going to have running action inside. Corey Hart, did he go? He did. John Hirschbeck will be behind the plate tomorrow afternoon. That's a four o'clock start. 
One of the better umpires in the game. They come out of retirement to go throw with him behind the plate. He's a guy that will call some strikes, particularly on the outside corner. Chris Naverson will be going up against Joel Pinheiro in that 4 o'clock start tomorrow, the finale of the series. So about a perfect umpire for Pinheiro on the mound. He throws a lot of strikes. Hits his corner. Should be an interesting game there tomorrow, especially in that 4 o'clock game. Opinion, one of the best umpires in the game, and has been for a long time. See that hole in which Jim Joyce was voted the best umpire in the game. It's a very good umpire. Tim McClellan was second. As Corey Hart, one hopper, nice play by Meiser. Spears to get the force out at second base, and that's it. Saving a run, going to that backhand. And Meiser has some of the softest hands. In baseball, no matter what position Mike Sosha puts him at. Backhand still has the presence of mind to make a strong throw to second base to get that out. Still in position to get a ground ball double play without giving up any more runs because of that play by Meisler. So Braun will step up now with one out. Two men on base. Braun with a couple of hits. In the dirt. Let's take a look at our U.S. Marines leaders of the game. 103 home runs in his first three seasons. Sixth most in Major League Baseball history. That's a pretty good name he's in the midst of. Well, I'll tell you what, he's not a real big guy either, but he's got some strong arms and forearms, able to drive the ball to all fields. Doesn't get cheated on a swing also. One one pitch, good location on that one, and it's one and two. Escobar leading things off here in the eighth inning with a base hit. He's at third base. Part with that fielder's choice remains at first. That didn't miss by much. Two balls, two strikes. Not the same tempo that we've grown accustomed to seeing Francisco work at. A little bit more deliberate. Kind of force some throws through. You yeah. see a number of pitches bouncing in the dirt. Angels with that long awaited off day on Thursday. Travel day to Chicago. Take on the Cubs over the weekend. And Braun goes down swinging on a pitch that was nowhere near the strike zone. They're down number two. So that's a cut fastball. You can see by that swing, Braun was fooled by that pitch. For the lines of the fastball, but that sharp action off the outside corner gets a swing and miss. So two outs, and Prince Fielder steps up now. One for three with that two run home run way back in the first inning off Irvin Santana. And now it gets by Napoli. Escobar will score at 7 0 Milwaukee. I 
That's the first run allowed by Rodriguez. Way over through this pitch, about four or five pitches in the dirt for Rodriguez tonight. It's overthrowing, forcing it. That was bound to happen. Wasn't going to go a whole season without giving up a run. That's some good stuff, though. When you throw 94 to 96 with that cut fastball. Split the curveball too, and I mean, he, he's generally pretty aggressive on the mound. Very solid pitcher. Now he's falling behind on fielder, three balls and no strikes. Got the right hand hitting Casey McGee up, waiting on deck. Fielder lays off, and that's a walk. So that'll put a, another man on base for McGee. 0 for 4 in this one with a couple of strikeouts. McGee's been booed every time he's stepped to the plate because of that slide and contact made it with Eric Ibar. Last night's game, so from Eric out of the lineup. He said he's got a meniscal tear, a meniscal injury. No tear, just a meniscal injury that will be reevaluated on Friday. One run in for Milwaukee. They lead it seven to nothing. Fans go to Jack in the Box to get a Soccer Jack antenna ball for only $1 plus tax. And buy Toyota. Get a great deal on Toyota's full line of hybrid and fuel-efficient vehicles at your Toyota dealer today. 7-0 Milwaukee here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Everyone enjoying the food. Pretzels, Gooby's favorite. Pretzels with mustard. Love them. Can't get enough, can you? No. To have one now. I'll tell you what, those pretzels we had in St. Louis. Out of this none. world. Bar none. The best ever. Franzen drilling one out to left center field. Ryan Braun can't make the catch. Franzen heading to second base and he will stop there with a leadoff double. That's a 
that's one of those Braun the closer he got to the baseball kept going and knew he wasn't going to make that catch he's too far away from it boy a hanger back up breaking pitch the friends was able to get a good part of the bat on it Braun no chance really better off just trying to cut that off holding him to a single the way Bush has been able to keep the ball down a ground ball double play was still in order but now it's not And for the second straight inning, man at second, nobody out. I would imagine the stop sign is on Kevin Franzen at second base. Brandon Woods 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. One back to the pitcher, the other to short. Double there by Kevin Franzen, the sixth hit by the Angels tonight. And it looks like Cameron Lowe's back up and loose with Campbell's up in the seventh inning. Wood fouls this into the right. It's one ball, two strikes. out of Brandon Wood is he's starting to get that good lower part of his body stay compact and start driving the baseball breaking balls upstairs two balls two strikes That last win, April the twentieth, had a no hitter a couple of times last year, late in the ball game. Remember the one in Philadelphia, in which Matt Stairs hit the home run to break up the no no. Wood, it's a towering shot out to right center, playable for Jim Edmonds. Franzen will tag from second and stay there. Fakes the the tag, and one out. Time now for the One West Bank, one person, one play. Brought to you by One West Bank, one person at a time. It's not Petco like last year. Another beast formed that ball boy's chair and jacket. But pretty close. I remember sitting in the dugout about, about 3.30, 3.45, maybe a little bit later. I look up towards the press box and I see, man, I, see, yeah, I guess the heat brings out. I thought they were just like gnats. No. Yeah, they were all over. Yeah, bees. Yeah. Looks like a few of them are still there. The Stewart's out towards left center field. Jim Edmonds not going to get this one. It's going to fall in there. Coming around the score is Kevin Franzen and the Stewart's in a second with an RBI double. The Stewart picks up his eighth double, his 15th RBI. And they Gordo steps for the Angels, comes to an end. Pretty solid swing there for Meister. Good angle to go see how he's able to keep his back through the zone on the outside part of the plate and drive up the left center field. Angels have gone 14 innings plus without a run. Ken Mock is going to come out. Looks like he's going to make a change. Cameron Lowe ready to go in the bullpen. And maybe, just maybe, this is a little opening that the Angels need. The Brewers' bullpen comes into tonight with a 5.76 ERA. But that being said, Randy Wolf, Dave Bush, both with starters with ERAs over five, and they've kept the Angels in check. We'll see what happens when we come back.
76 gasoline. We're on the driver's side. And by Jack Daniels. Your friends at Jack Daniels remind you to drink responsibly. Angels getting a run here off Dave Bush in the eighth inning. It's 7-1 Milwaukee. He's still responsible for his stirs at second base as he's turned the ball over to the big right-hander. 6'8", 228-pounder Cameron Lowe. Great numbers. Just six games with the big club this year. Well, he's got a fastball with good movement. 89-93, a curveball. Changeup. Howie Kendrick at the plate, and the first pitch is upstairs for ball one. Low, originally in the Texas Rangers organization. At the Granada Hills High School in Cal State Northridge. Last year, spent in Japan, in the minor leagues in Japan. 1-0. Breaking ball. Outside, two balls, no strikes. Fukuoka. And only gotten five games. Five starts. was 0-4 in a 6.33 ERA. And apparently, he's figured it out at that point. He died at 6 ERA. He got five games and he's 0-4? Five games. 0-4, 6.33. That's some bad luck. 27 innings, 36 hits. He gave up. Angel fans would remember a couple of years ago, Cameron Lowe with the Rangers. Facing Vladimir Guerrero and Vladdy right here at this ballpark. Drilling a line shot off his cranium. Ground ball to McGee and now he's retired for round number two. Remember that ball. Ricocheting out to a short shot. Remember that one. He's a they big walk right target. Off. Yeah, yeah, big target. 6'7, six, 6'8. Six, so Bobby steps up with one out, or pardon me, two outs, and one on. 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs, and a fly ball to left. Duras on a second base. He had the RBI double that scored Franzen. Bobby cues this one foul. Throw a little bit more over the top than what he used to do. He used to be a full three-quarter guy. Drop down on occasion. When you're a three-quarter guy, especially who relies on sink, that's going to get a lot of ground balls up the middle. You always got to be positioned to be, field your position. If you're that tall, you're susceptible to those line drives. One and two. You see that good action on that fastball. It's easier for him to get on top of that pitch. Lote delivers down low. It's two balls, two strikes. Torrey Hunter John deck. I still would have liked to have seen how that seventh inning would have played out had Torrey just not broken for third base. It's a scene. Putting a little pressure on Dave Bush, pitching from the strength for an extended period of time.
Bobby swings and misses on the 2-2 pitch. And that will end the eighth. The Angels do get on the board on a couple of hits. Through eight, Milwaukee's still up 7-1. Come out tomorrow afternoon. That's a 4 o'clock start between the Angels and the Brewers. The finale of this three-game set. All you've got to do is punch in the password ANGELS at angelsbaseball.com. You'll get 50% off ticket prices in select seating areas. You can also do that at the Angels Stadium ticket window. That simple? So simple. Almost as easy as it. Yes or no question for you in the trivia. Well those. Francisco Rodriguez trying to finish this one off. Irvin Santana going five frames. Scott Shields two. And now Rodriguez in his second inning. Gave up the run in the eighth. The first run that he'd allowed this year. This is only the fourth time that Jim Edmonds has let off an inning. Two for four with a single to double. A strikeout. Got him with a fastball. Clocked at 94. There's out number one. Much better rhythm in this inning so far for Rodriguez. Good fastball. Movement at 94. Start at middle part of the play, then work this way to the outside corner. He'll face Council here with one out. Two for four performance. Game tomorrow, Chris Naverson going up against Joel Pinheiro. And in case you're wondering about the, the Cup Series, all three day games, Friday's game at 11.20 a.m. Pacific time on Fox Sports West. All three games will be on Fox Sports West. Saturday's game is at 10.05 a.m. And Sunday at 11.20 a.m. All times Pacific. We've got the resurgent Carlos Silva. Who knew? He of the pitch to contact. It's working in the National League where he can give up some hits. He's eight and one. Well, maybe he doesn't give up any hits anymore. <laughs> with a 2.89 ERA. We had that one year with Minnesota prior to that big contract that was handed out by Billy Bavese, the Seattle Mariners, where he didn't walk anybody. He walked one. Well, he's a guy that threw a lot of strikes. He gave up a lot of hits, as I recall. Remember one year he gave up about 230 hits or more in the season. Sinker ball specialist. Well, he's going on Friday against Scott Casimir. Saturday afternoon, Ted Lilly, the left-hander. 
against Jared Weaver. He really had a no hitter going the other day in the seventh inning. So he had that going for him that night. And then on Sunday afternoon, Carlos Zambrano, the Z train. Back of the rotation as Council goes down, swinging ground number two. Z train will be going up against Joe Saunders. He shows absolutely no emotion on the mound either. <laughs> or at the plate when there's a call going against him. We learned that he can throw a baseball very far when he's upset. Those Gatorade coolers have a tendency to get beat up a little bit. There's Jonathan Lucroy, the catcher. He's had a nice evening. Two for four with a couple of singles. That wraps up that pitching matchup. That weekend series in Chicago. Then there's another off day on Monday. The Angels are home for two weeks. Nice stretch. We need to start playing some more consistent baseball at home. First two games against Milwaukee so far. Hitting hasn't been there. The pitching, even the focus. Some lapses during the course of this game. Let me ask you though, can you can you point to a, someone like Eric Ibar getting hurt on the heels just two and a half weeks after Kendra Morales gets hurt? And the team saying, all right, we could soak up one, but now Eric, as good as he's going. I, uh, some other teams, maybe. I don't. I don't see it with with the Angels. Just because they've had so many key players get hurt and miss significant time, yet everyone seems to step up. I think that's the mentality of Mike Sosa. It's always been since I've seen him take over the Angels. It's that feeling, and all 25 guys will have an opportunity to win a game, no matter what the scenario is. You know, even if you're a player that doesn't get a lot of playing time, when you're asked to come in there, you perform. And he got him. Struck out the side. Nice inning for Francisco Rodriguez. We head to the bottom of the ninth. 7 1 Milwaukee. the ninth. It is seven to one. Milwaukee. Angel fans want to see how the kids can win a ballpark makeover and how you can win a new Chevy? Just find out at Chevy and Scott are building diamonds and dreams at ChevyBaseball.com. Need a major rally here. Got the rally for doors maybe. This guy's got it going on. No doubt about that. Pump. Napoleon Dynamite's here.
Nice to see the folks that have come out. 37,000 strong for Fedora Night. Hanging out here. Here in the ninth inning, John Axford takes over on the mound. Good numbers for him. 3 1 record at 321 ERA. Perfect in save opportunities. 4 4. He is the guy that the Brewers have been relying on to close games down with the struggles that Trevor Hoffman had at the beginning of the year. He'll face Hunter Matsui Napoli. See that fastball he has, 90 to 95. His best pitch though is a 12 to 6 curveball and also will throw a changeup. A lot of arms, a lot of legs coming at you. Maxford 6'5", so not as tall as Cameron Lowe, who stands at 6'8". This is a guy that once was drafted by the Seattle Mariners in the seventh round in 2001, did not sign. As Torrey went around with the breaking pitch, and it's one and two. Was selected by the Cincinnati Reds in the 42nd round in 2005 and did not sign and decided instead to sign as a non-drafted free agent. But the New York Yankees in 06. Got some big league time last year. Seven games. And a 352 ERA. Pitching down in triple A. As a setup man. Torrey bouncing this one towards short. Escobar's got it. There's out number one. She's a pretty good sink on that fastball. That's for perhaps proving the old adage. You, you know, you, four times a night, you stumble upon a closer. And I always, even though you'll see that more and more, even in the high school level, and certainly in the collegiate level, you see some guy already designated a closer. But most times in the minor leagues, for a long period of time, you were a starter because then you could develop your three or four pitches to be able to get the arm strength to be able to eventually be a closer. Matsui takes out shot. He's one for three. Had a single back in the seventh. Even to count at one ball, one strike. The fastball in the low 90s, getting up on the hands of Matt Seward. He's got a good stash. Like, like a 1982 Harvey Wallbanger stash. Perfect. Look at that. That's old school. Kind of goose gossips like. And so we're lining that one foul. It's two balls, two strikes. That's a very good movement on that pitch. Almost not too far from. Raleigh fingers that look. Could probably turn that thing around, could it? Twirl it on the ends. You got some of that hair polish that you use for Mr. Axford? <laughs> oh, you got, I don't think so. Full count on that, Tui. Well, there you go. That's when you were trying to come up with Oya Komova. That's the guy you were looking at, huh? Thinking of Carlos Santana. <laughs> and that right there just doesn't get old. 
I mean, the tie, I mean, that's just a good look. That is a great look. That takes a little bit of time, don't you think? Matsui draws the walk. That's the first walk issued in this game by Milwaukee. Reggie Willis will pinch run here for Matsu. Mike Napoli's 0 for 3 with a strikeout, a ground out the fly ball to right. Napoli just out in front of that one, and it's no balls and one strike. Even to count of one and one. We go 81 mile an hour breaking pitch, 93 mile an hour fastball in on the hands. It's always a difficult pitch to be Gauge, especially after that slow pitch and then the running fastball. Two balls and a strike. Axford hadn't pitched since last Thursday. That's why he's getting some action here today. Ended up picking up a win in that game against the Cubs. Two balls, two strikes. Down at Triple A Nashville, he pitched in 12 games, a 3 2 record, two saves, a 203 ERA. Full count, just like he had on Matt Suri. You never know, if you want to get the Angels back in the ballgame, start walking some batters so with more base runners. Napoli goes down, swinging, there's out number two. Mike might have helped him out there with a fastball that was off the inside part of the plate. Originally out of the hand of Axford, it looks like it was a strike, but then it ran off the inside corner at 94. So the Angels down to the last out here in the ninth. Juan Rivera, one for three. He had a single in the fifth. Axford delivering a strike. Dave Bush stands to pick up the victory. It would be his second of the year. Rivera lining on his center field. Edmonds is there. And there is out number three. And the Milwaukee Brewers have taken the first two games of this series. And with one home run in today's game, a total of $15,000 has been raised in our game for prostate cancer research. To make a donation, you can call 800-798-CURE or go online to www.pcf. Dot org. Dave Bush picks up the victory, his second of the year.